Well, hello, and welcome to How to Achieve Full Stack Observability in Highly Distributed Environments. That's a mouthful, but the topic is so relevant today. After all, if you don't know what you've got, how can you manage, how can you manage it or protect it properly, right? Now, today's webinar is sponsored by Progress Software and produced by Actual Tech Media. My name is Keith Ward. I'm from Actual Tech Media, as you might have guessed, and I am excited to be your moderator for this special event. So before we get to today's content, though, we do have a few housekeeping items that I hope you get the most out of this session. First off, we want this to be an informative event for you, so we encourage any questions in the questions box in your webinar control panel. At the end of the presentation, we'll also have a dedicated Q&A session with our expert to ask some of your top questions. That Q&A panel is also the place to let us know about any technical issues you might be experiencing. A browser refresh will fix most audio, video, and slide advancement issues, but if that doesn't work, let us know in the Q&A and we'll provide further technical assistance. That's also the place to let us know where you're logging in from, and it looks like you're logging in from all over the place. That is always so good to see. All right, next to the Q&A tab is the Handouts tab, and that's got a number of important resources, so you might want to try clicking on that now. I'd especially like to call your attention to the free PDF from, Pro from Progress Software that's got more information about today's topics. Now, in the handout session is also uh, links to the Gorilla Guide Book Club, where you can get access to Actual Tech Media's vast library of resources on technology topics, as well as a link to the ATM Event Center, which has our calendar of upcoming events. At the end of this session, we'll be awarding a $250 Amazon gift card to one lucky registrant. Now, you do have to be in attendance during the live event and all of it, all of the event, to qualify for the prize. The official terms and conditions of today's prize drawing can be found in the handout section. All right, so one of the benefits, one of the best things about this event and all actual tech media events is the opportunity to ask questions of our expert presenters. To help encourage those questions, we have a special additional prize for you. That's another Amazon gift card, this one for $50 for the best question. After the event is over, we'll look at all the questions that came in, pick out the very best one and contact that prize winner. So with that, it is now time to get the show on the road. It's my pleasure to introduce you to our presenter today. He's Larry Goldman, Director of Product Marketing for Progress Software. Larry. The floor is yours. And thank you all for joining us today to discuss network observability and observability platforms. Here's our agenda where we'll start with a discussion of the challenges or the why. We're gonna move into the what, and finally, we're gonna to touch on the how. I plan to keep this short and to the point, and we'll take questions at the end if there's time. There is no end to the challenges facing today's IT operations team. A core question would be, with, with all this rapid change we're seeing, how do we maintain visibility? The list you see on the side, it's never ending. These activities require complete network coverage. It's the only way that you can ensure smooth network operations. And because it's a rapidly changing digital world with the ongoing digital transformation, let's look at some of the numbers to represent that that come from a recent report by the Enterprise Strategy Group, ESG. First of all, I don't think this is a surprise to anybody. Uh, organizations, pretty much everyone, is moving to the public cloud. Also, about 86% of organizations that they surveyed use at least two or more of the public cloud services. So this growing complexity within their network and IT infrastructure. Here's an interesting one as well from the same survey. Organizations, 62% of organizations, still have less than 50% of their applications in the cloud. So they're moving to the cloud, but they're keeping a lot of the applications back and eventually will be moving them over, but there's still a lot of work to be done in their digital transformation. But they have high hopes. 94% uh, of these organizations state that they want to get deeper involved into edge computing. So what all of this is telling us is that your modern IT infrastructure is becoming an increasingly complicated mix of on-premise, public, and private cloud applications, devices, and environments. Distributed systems have a far higher number of interconnected parts, obviously, so the number and types of failure that can occur is also higher. Additionally, 
distributed systems are constantly updated and every change can create a new type of failure. And there are just more unknown unknowns, as they say, in these distributed environments. So they are obviously are more complex to manage. And that's why we're here and talking about network observability today. Because companies like yours have either begun to talk about investing in it or have already made some considerable investment into the platforms. We should note, though, that while it's a, a great idea to jump in, it's not so easy to implement. I found this study from LogDNA and the Harris Poll, and they went and interviewed a lot of professionals and said, how's it going? And the results were not very positive. For example, 74% of the companies they talked to said they're actually struggling, they use the word struggling, to achieve true observability. Okay, and this unhappy majority is dealing with a lot of the same issues. They report usability issues, they report collaboration issues, they report issues around how they deal with security events. It's not working as they had hoped. Another thing that's reported from this is that they're using a lot of tools, the tool sprawl that we hear about. 72% of these companies using two to 10 or more observability tools. And there's other studies that tend to show the average being between 10 and 15. The problem with using so many tools, obviously one of them is the cost. So two thirds of the organizations in the study said they're spending 100K or more annually on these tools. And the saddest part of all, I think, is that more than half of them indicate that they're not happy with those exact tools. So this, again, I think we're showing the challenge. We're showing here that it's not something that you just go into. It takes a lot of work. It takes the right platforms. And again, that's what we're going to be talking about. Clearly, getting to observability, just getting there can be a challenge. Now, I want to jump over to talking about what observability over to talking about what observability is a little bit because there's so many things out there and so many ways that people are talking about it. If you run a simple Google search or attend an IT conference or you visit an analyst website, you're gonna see that everyone's talking about observability. It's a hot topic. All the major firms are publishing annual reports and the vendors in the space have plenty to say as well. For those of you who are new to the concept, it's, I think, not difficult to get confused by what we read about conflicting definitions that these experts are presenting. Everyone's got their angle. Everyone has a little bit more of an emphasis. You know, in some cases, the discussion can be kind of theoretical and less than practical. Some are high on jargon. I'm not a big fan of using a lot of, of jargon like that because it takes away from the quality of the content. So it really also depends on where you're coming from. You know, are you in uh, network operations? You're looking to focus more on network observability. Or are you DevOps and you're interested in application monitoring across clouds? Or are you in security ops and you're interested in observability of traffic flows to detect potential security threats? You know, we all come at this from a different angle. Maybe you're working in a team, hopefully, and collaborating the net dev sec ops, right? That would be another way that you're looking at lots of different aspects of it. So let's take a minute then to cover what we at Progress feel is the appropriate definition of observability. And if we go back to the beginning, this gentleman here, his name was Rudolf Emil Kalman. He was a Hungarian-American electrical engineer and inventor, and he worked on control systems. And he's the one that coined in the 1960s the idea of observability. And, and here's his definition. It's very simple. Observability is the ability to measure the internal states of a system by examining its outputs. And I think a lot of people refer to this definition because it's pretty straightforward. In his case, he was using sensor data on control systems like for space and other engineering type products. But uh, starting around the 2000s, we had uh, more uh, technical companies like Twitter that were gaining an interest in this idea. And engineers at these large tech companies were beginning to design ways to observe their complex systems, the systems of today. And so... This is a definition then coming up that I like and that we're going to be using going forward in this presentation. I believe that this is the most complete and thoughtful definition that I've seen, and I've seen quite a lot of them. It comes from an EMA research report on network observability that was created after a year of research and conversations with hundreds of network professionals. So I think it was, it was quite well thought out. I'm going to read it simply because I want to uh, emphasize, I, I put the green italic emphasis in there. 
network observability. It's a network monitoring system. And we'll be talking about network monitoring that collects a complete and diverse set of network data. So comprehensive data to provide deep visibility and actionable insights, not just insights, but actionable ones into both the current and the future states of the network. And that's a very important point that we'll be talking about as well. Understanding the future state of your network. And actionable insights include how the performance of your network, the performance of your applications, the security of your network, as well as that critical end user experience. So I believe that this really does capture a very practical, usable framework for what network observability should be. And you can see why observability is important. It gives you greater control over complex systems because while simple systems have fewer moving parts, they're easier to manage. But the complexity, as we were talking about earlier, the complexity that we're growing towards, that everyone has to grow towards to keep up, to compete, to continue to do the work that we need to do on the technical infrastructure side, it can't be held back. And so the metrics like the monitoring CPUs and memory and databases and networking conditions that used to be merely adequate to help, they're no longer that. For greater control and complete network coverage, you need end-to-end -end visibility. Still, a definition is good, but let's look at how the techs evolved to get us where we are today. One way is to focus on the difference between traditional monitoring, understanding the state of the ecosystem, and network observability. So monitoring tracks the overall health of the application. It aggregates data on how the system's performing in terms of things like access speeds, connectivity, downtime, and bottlenecks. It's especially good at alerting and for tracking and helping to analyze long-term trends. When it comes to the evolution, I think that there's roughly four stages. Stage one was no monitoring, right? Back in the day, there weren't tools. Things broke. We were lucky if we could fix them. Or maybe because the networks were so simple, it was much easier to identify. But the complexity, as we see, is growing. And so that brought on simple monitoring, much more of a manual process, things like sending out pings, answering simple questions like just, is the system connected? That was a great first step. As things advanced, we got into more comprehensive monitoring. This becomes automated. We start to get context. We start to be able to narrow down to figure the where the root cause is for issues that occur within the network. And we can start to ask deeper questions like, is the system giving us the right response when we make a request? And finally, we build up to our topic of today, network observability. And this gets far more complex, multi-service app support. We're looking at dependencies. We're looking at all different kinds of data. We're also optimizing it for that ephemeral environment that's always changing and growing as we add more services, as we add more clouds and so forth. And the quality of the questions, once again, goes a level deeper. When can an issue develop? Uh, does it matter? I think another way to look at this as well is this progression, this evolution, is to look at the axes of this. And the first axis you can see is we've been moving from the low context questions, low context data, uh, and manual processes up to high context and automation. Another axis would be how we work, right? We're going from very reactive, oh, something's broken. Somebody just called me and told me it's broken. I got to figure out what it is first, and then I got to fix it. Going up then through becoming more proactive. Hey, I'm seeing a problem. Nobody knows about it yet. I'm going to fix it. All's well. And then moving into, with network observability, this predictive sense. Now, observability and monitoring complement each other. With Each one is serving a different purpose. So monitors telling you when something's wrong. Observability enables you to understand why it happened as well as what might happen in the future. And that's because observability is drilling down into the cause of failures to enable that deeper root cause analysis. It's looking at the dependencies across the changing and distributed environments. Now, a final point I wanna make here before we go too much further is simply that I want you to remember that observability can only be done if you build the right stack in such a way that you can access the data you need. You have to build your networks to be observable. And that's the basic state of it. So that's the evolution. Let's talk about the types of data 
that are collected in this. You can see a whole list here, everything from network performance and bandwidth consumption, and that's across the entire network, to things like wireless, collecting log data, collecting configuration and application health data, all different kinds of data from your devices, and trace data as well for applications. So these are all different kinds of data that are used, and it needs to be collected from on-prem, cloud-based services, co-location centers, uh, and remote locations. Plus, this all needs to be contextualized with the other data to deliver insights. And that's really what these tools are doing. They're helping us with the context, looking at the dependencies. It gets more complex, the tools grow to encompass and handle that complexity. We've talked about metrics a little bit. So what are we measuring from that data that we just talked about? Here's a sample of some of the kinds of metrics you can and should capture for observability. And this is just a short list, right? But these are the kinds of KPIs that help you quantify performance. They also help you to set alerts when a system's down or when load balancers reach capacity. And they help you to monitor events for anomalous activities such as security breaches. Um, the best part is that when it's done correctly, network observability has been shown to be of substantial benefit to the business. And that has to be on our minds as well. So let's talk about that. Again, going back to the research online, there's plenty of it. I looked for great recent examples of business benefits for this. <laughs> and you can take this to your boss and you can talk about it and say, look at these great things. The first one would be in terms of visibility, right? Much better visibility. And then that should be obvious in the term observability. But when they do studies and they talk to uh, lots and lots of organizations that are doing this, you know, they see great numbers around the improvement in the visibility around application performance, around the visibility into the security posture, as well as into the clouds and that distributed infrastructure, that hybrid cloud infrastructure as well. So visibility is a big benefit. Another benefit, really uh, speed and cost savings. In this study, they looked at people who are leaders, but also people who are beginners working on network observability. And uh, the leaders reported a 69% faster mean time to repair or mean time to resolution, whichever you choose. And that is amazing. They also showed tremendous cost savings. The more experienced an organization was, the more it was able to save against very costly downtime for their organization. So a benefit there. And finally, you know, let's talk about the experience of people and about the security of our systems. It does strengthen cybersecurity posture. And it's been shown that it increases the ability for different teams to collaborate because usually they're working with the same deep information. Productivity is up because of automation. And the end user, whether that's a customer or an employee, they have an improved digital experience or application experience. So plenty of business benefits for network observability. So I want to move on now to the observability platform. Let's pause for a second and think about that cautionary phrase, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> the ESG has done a number of studies, and, and in this one, I thought it was very interesting. If you look at the numbers, you can, you can see that 99% of the organizations they talk to believe that end-to-end -end visibility, by which they mean observability, is either important or very important. That people are just, they just get it. They want it, they understand it, maybe they haven't implemented it yet, but this is the direction that forward-thinking IT and operations groups are going. ESG also ran a survey to determine uh, what organizations actually want from a solution. So it's one thing to say, hey, we, we want to go in this direction. It's another thing to say, well, how do you envision that? So they found that 20% of the organizations that they talked to, they wanted monitoring alerts and information, but they just wanted to do their own analysis and control solution, which I think a lot of people are moving towards today. And that would go, if, we, if you think back to the evolution that we talked about, that would probably be simple monitoring, more likely the comprehensive monitoring that we talked about. But it's not that definition of network observability. So what those people are asking for, they're maybe confusing the terms of monitoring with observability. But 59%, almost 6 in 10 of the respondents, are thinking about observability as we've been talking about it. They want the management software to provide alerts and serve as a recommendation engine that could use based on learned behavior uh, from automated real-time or historic data analysis. So they're getting that deep, rich data and uh, looking at the dependencies as we've been talking about. But 
those six out of 10 still want the staff to be responsible for implementation and execution. Now, if you read some of the analyst reports, the analysts really would like to go where the last remaining 21% of respondents would go, which is to move into management software that does it all. It automatically detects, it analyzes, it recommends, applies the changes as needed, and then the staff can review those changes and, and maybe make their own changes in, but really the software is doing it all for you. And I think what ESG found really was that people want to know more, they want to see more, but they're not necessarily comfortable right now with giving too much control to systems. And I keep an eye on that, see how that changes going into the future. But really, I think there is an increased demand, but there's, as we see, there's no agreement still on exactly what a platform should do and how much control should be ceded to automation and machine learning. But there are the basics, right? Um, and we've already touched on a number of these, collecting that deep granular data from throughout the network, tracking it so you have comprehensive dashboards, you have, you have materials that you can work with, being able to automatically detect and fix issues to a certain extent within this ever-changing and complex environment, uh, looking at applications and systems to help maintain the SLAs, to help maintain uptime, and getting those reports. And finally, the ability to look, because you're looking so intently at the network, the ability to use that to increase and improve your security posture. So platforms can be delivered in three different models. There's a virtual appliance, which can be deployed in public clouds, private clouds, or other on-premise infrastructure. And the performance there for virtual appliances depends on the infrastructure itself and the connectivity of the network. A second way would be a physical appliance. And we here at Progress, we have both virtual and physical for some of our solutions. This tool requires one or more specialized network hardware units to be installed on the customer's network. It's the least flexible method, but it also offers the most control. And finally, software as a service. I think we're all thinking going in that direction. The tool can be accessed directly through a web portal, but there are some downsides here too. It might not meet your security requirements or have the level of complexity that you require for your complex distributed networks. No product will offer you 100% observability. It's just the nature of things. In a study by EMA called The State of Network Operations, the authors examined the extent to which network operations teams could be proactive with network trouble. So they said, you're, you're doing observability, how's it working? And they found that a majority of the teams claim to proactively detect at least 80% of the problems before they impacted the business. It's good, right? A little less, about half of them could proactively remediate at least 80 of the problems. So 100% of observability, that's, that's an amazing goal. But certainly, especially as you start, don't expect that it's going to be able to do everything for you. There's a learning curve, there's growth, there's building. And even the best practitioners out there are saying that they don't always get it right. So let's talk selection. As you look at the list below, you'll see that many of the features we've discussed aren't there, like real-time data, discovering and mapping assets, offering visibility across most types of network infrastructure. That's because those are just becoming the norm. Those are the table stakes. You should be in this for the long term, though, so it helps to focus on the robustness of the platform uh, and the vendor, and that platform could include multiple tools. Once again, the Enterprise Strategy Group, who we've worked with, has some recommendations, and they're, they're talking about eight different characteristics that you ought to think about, again, for the long term. The first being end-to-end -end support, and this extends from the application to the end user, regardless of where that application or user is located. The second would be support for heterogeneous network environments. Your environment is heterogeneous. You've got a lot of different logos, a lot of different brands of different devices out there, and the system needs to be able to collect and correlate from them all. And for those in multiple public clouds, this capability be especially important. The collection of metrics, events, logs, and network traces. We've talked about this a couple of times. You have to be able to collect as much data as possible from the network devices and traffic in order to accelerate problem identification and resolution. Support for application level monitoring. In the event of an outage or degradation of service for your applications, you have to have the ability to correlate that application traffic to specific network environments to speed and optimize the resolution of the problem. The ability to enhance security posture as well. Highly distributed environments, they naturally represent a much larger attack surface and greater risk to the business. 
once a threat actor gets past traditional perimeter security and is inside your network, you need to use the data collected from the network to help detect anomalous traffic, that footprint that they leave. Because they can be in there, they can be hiding, but they will leave footprints and be able to take immediate action from what you're able to detect. Centralized management is a key to an observability platform. You need to drive operational efficiency and take advantage of a single management console. And that requires instrumentation and that the components that you have are able to speak the same language. We've mentioned AI a little bit, artificial intelligence and automation. Intelligent systems are required to manage the ever-changing and expanding network that we've been talking about. When considering a platform, you need to understand that the level of intelligence and automation that's currently available in an option, as well as determine what will be available in the near future. Because a lot of programs are really just beginning to experiment with that. And as much as the analysts want to pull us into the future quickly because it's so exciting, companies have to develop these things carefully. They have to learn from it. And so a lot of organizations, a lot of vendors are moving in this direction and hoping to expand on this in the near future. Uh, finally, a tight integration with other applications. It's imperative that network platforms are tightly integrated into your trouble ticketing, workflow systems, your other security and IT system tools. You need to be able to exchange data back and forth. And this is generally done by vendors that have published and support APIs to accelerate these integrations. And, and you should be asking questions about that as well, given what you need for your particular set of existing tools. Finally, what are the types of questions your team needs to answer based on your network complexity and distribution? Is tool sprawl an issue for your organization? How many observability tools do you have going across all of your teams? Cost has to be a factor. What can you afford and what will allow you to scale when your observability tool budget increases? Think about that investment, something that's scalable is very important. Many tools require intense customization, no matter what they claim on their website. Complex tools require that. It's just the nature of it. So look to see what must be manually customized, or do you have to purchase additional services from the vendor? That's good to know, especially how long is it going to take you to get this system up, tested, and running. Automation has to be a goal. How much can the tool do for your team before they need to step in? How much can the platform guide you or provide root cause analysis? And finally, it's very important to think, who's going to operate this? Is your team ready and skilled enough? We've discussed the challenges, the definition, the benefits, and what to look for in a platform. So let's finish up by briefly discussing the observability solutions we offer at Progress. Progress offers three tools designed to monitor and provide observability. They operate in a complementary manner and allow you to view your IT infrastructure from multiple vantage points. They're all solving for slightly different and slightly overlapping aspects of observability. The first, What's of Gold, is for IT infrastructure monitoring. It analyzes logs, bandwidth, device status, hardware health, configurations, application health, and more, the type of data that we've spoken about. And it accesses the metrics we referenced so that op teams can apply that data to observability practices. And much of what this tool does can be automated from detection to alerting to self-healing actions for devices and services wherever they are, on-premise or in a hybrid cloud network. Flowmon, in the middle, provides both network performance monitoring and rapid network detection and response through flow and packet analysis. Using machine learning and AI, which we have in Flowmon, it can examine and react to the anomalies in the traffic, performance, and network behavior. Then, through APIs, Flowmon can communicate with other devices to shut down a threat. We also offer Kemp Loadmaster, which balances application delivery and provides observability and insights into the security and health of applications, and therefore, the vital end user experience. These can all operate in highly distributed environments, collect a complete and diverse set of network data, and provide deep visibility and actionable insights into the current and future state of your network. Here you can see the difference in What's Up Gold and Flowmon in what they can observe. You can see What's Up Gold in its dashboards, looking at all the different devices, 
looking at, throughout the network, Flowmon, looking at indicators of compromise, anomalies, looking at traffic and performance. They offer complementary solutions and they're integrated as a platform through the What's Up Gold dashboard interface. The combined dashboard setup provides a centralized management point, we've talked about that, for all the network data, including that from Loadmaster, and faster diagnosis of device health, traffic performance, and security issues. In summary, when done properly through the right platform that fits your budget, staffing, and network complexity, Network observability will provide end-to-end -end visibility and complete network coverage. This allows you to understand the internal state of the system, and from that, you can determine what's not working correctly and why. And I hope, too, that you've also been able to pull some ideas as you're looking at systems, some of the selection ideas that have been proposed. Uh, just to reiterate a few of the, the benefits again, it improves operational efficiency, network health and security, fosters collaboration. The different groups within your organization have the ability using that single management interface and same language to be able to begin to take their separate operations and begin to combine them and or at least begin to communicate more smartly. The customer, the users have a better experience because you are solving issues prior to their being exposed out in the network. And finally, it allows you to keep pace with that complex, ever-changing, ever-evolving environments that is your IT infrastructure, and you can do that in one place. So I wanna finish up here, just to tell you how you can learn a little bit more. If you're looking for examples, we have plenty of case studies and videos on our website, progress.com. Also, you'll be receiving a link to this paper. Afterwards, choosing the right network observability platform for highly distributed environments, kind of the uh, inspiration for this talk. As well, we have a short video with Bob Laliberte of ESG and our own Jason Dover, and the two discuss how to choose an observability platform. It's, it's a short video, it's very informative, and well worth your time. And with that, I think we have some time for a few questions. And I think you are right, Larry. Hey, thanks for a great presentation. Uh, so much learning going on there um, from me and from the attendees, I think. Uh, so are you ready to take a few questions from our audience? I am. I'd be glad to. Outstanding. Well, let's get right into it. Um, first question, uh, Larry, how does observability, in your opinion, differ from what, uh, what we might call simple visibility? That's a great question, Keith. So, um, I, you know, it's interesting, even in my own company, um, I think there are individuals that use the terms interchangeably. They, uh, at one point, they're saying visibility, and then they switch over to observability because it's maybe a more, it's a hotter topic term. Um, but I think it is, I, I, I talked about this earlier, I think it is important to, to differentiate in terms of, of the depth of of the um, process that you're doing. So uh, simple visibility, uh, as I defined earlier, as in simple monitoring, is really knowing when things are up, when things are down, where things are blocked, where, where they are not. Um, but it's a, in, a, in observability, that's where you're collecting so much more data. You're getting into that, that um, comprehensive marketing where, uh, sorry, comprehensive monitoring where you're, uh, where you're actually uh, collecting deep data and and the difference is how actionable it is so for simple monitoring you can uh, or visibility uh, you're looking at things and then making decisions uh, as you get more and more complex to that level of observability on that evolutionary scale that I talked about um, you actually have tools that that are automated tools that are able to respond and to fix issues that are discovered or to alert you uh, much much quicker because just of the depth uh, of the data that it's able to sort through and to um, to learn from. So so it, it's it's really I think less and less people are talking about visibility today. I think observability uh, mostly because that's that's the direction everyone needs to go. That's the direction people are building their systems is probably the better term these days than visibility. 
I think you're right. And it, it see, I kind of agree with your take on that, that people are beginning to really understand observability. So, you know, that's a win, the, the more the industry is, is getting that sort of a nuance. Okay, so next up, Larry, um, this is a question uh, about a real life example of how a company is using a platform so, for observability. So this is really, you know, do you have any case studies, anything you can point to for how this is working? Sure. We we have a lot of these on our website. I, I think one of the favorites that I was just looking at the other day was a um, uh, was Coop, which is one of the largest retail and wholesale companies in Switzerland. It's it's the Coop Group, and they have they have about thirteen hundred stores, like little retail stores, um, markets and such, and um, and they're using observability uh, to to look into all of those uh, all of the. Uh, the infrastructure involved with those different stores. So it's quite an expansive network. Um, they've got something like 40,000 data flows per second. Um, and and they were running into issues around how to properly, when there are issues at individual stores, how to quickly identify and resolve them. Uh, you know, with a limited staff, how are you able to, to, um, to get the stores up and running? Because an outage, of course, of any sort is going to cost you uh, in terms of revenue and uh, certainly certainly uh, reputation. So um, so they, they are using that one tool that I talked about, Flowmon, um, which was really looking at the entire network, um, looking through it all to, uh, to help them very quickly alert and detect when there's issues uh, within the network uh, for such an extensive uh, area and region. Um, and they found that they found that they've been able to go from say maybe an hour or two down to solving problems within minutes uh, simply because they're able to they're collecting so much data that they're able to very sensitively detect when an issue either is occurring or has the potential to occur as well uh, stopping those issues that uh, haven't yet occurred but you see mounting evidence for uh, is another great advantage of this level of observability. So, so that would be one example. We have a we have a full description of that on our uh, flowmon.com website. Great. So, um, make sure to to check that out. Um, okay. Next up, um, Adam wants to know about the learning curve involved. Uh, how long once you implement? Uh, a progress solution. Um, how would you describe the learning curve for, for getting comfortable on it and, and putting it in use? Sure. So, um, you know, every vendor wants to say, oh, it's going to be a short, short learning curve for you. Yeah. <laughs> short and steep. You'll get it right away. But, you know, <laughs> there, there really is. <laughs> there, there, you know, there are a number of factors involved. Uh, number one, of course, is um, the uh, the staffing that you have. Do you have experience with these types of tools already? Do you have someone on staff that already knows what to do? Uh, you know, another piece would be, yeah, I talked about how to uh, choose observability platforms. How how helpful is uh, and how organized is the vendor? You know, do they have training that's going to help you? Do they have um, do they have services, whether they're sort of extended services or whether they're initial installation services? I've talked to a number of our customers. Uh, for the What's Up Gold product, who um, who have purchased additional services right at the beginning, just because they wanted to get up faster and they wanted to learn it quicker. So it depends on how much you want to invest in. In that sense, uh, generally, um, uh, there's usually a, a good company will have a lot of material available for you. They'll have best practices. They'll have guides. They'll have videos. Um, so I want to say that. Almost across the market, Pe people are doing this well. Uh, the learning curve should be short, but once you've got it up and you're using it, there is that longer learning curve of of learning about your individual network, learning about about your individual uh, the the parts and pieces of your infrastructure that are unique. Are the lessons you learn from that um, are going to take a bit of time? So getting the system set up, learning how to run it, checks whistles and bells, uh, that's fine. Uh, I I know. Um, some products can take a week, some can take a day. What's up gold? You can have it actually running up in an hour or so to be able to start looking at things and then and then drilling down and, and learning more. But but it's uh, I'd say maybe you're talking uh, to really get into it several weeks to the point where you're seeing individual unique 
aspects of your own system and learning from that. And of course, you learn, you readjust, you know, you, you tighten thresholds maybe. Maybe there are some false positives that are coming in where maybe, uh, maybe there's um, some, um, some, some work, some downtime for service that, that happens every so often. You know, building that in so you're not getting alerts around that. Understanding um, where you need to focus or not. Uh, and certainly building out that communication structure with other people. That's that's something that I don't think I emphasized as much. I, I think I talked about it a little bit uh, in the final benefits. But you know, one of the great things about an observability system is you get it up and running. Uh, and then let's say you're the NetOps group. You can bring in the SecOps group or a lot of observability tools. Um, we talked about network observability. There's also observability tools uh, that focus on on, on the DevOps group, on people that are pushing out applications and need to observe how those are working um, as well, and that's a that's even a different breed of observability, but uh, but certainly certainly um, uh, you know those are some of the things that you'll want to you want to consider. Thanks, and I think it's fair to say that yeah, there's going to be some learning curve to any uh, new platform, any new system you put in, but imagine the time it will take if you don't have a good observability system, the, the time it'll take tracking down issues and bottlenecks and security risks and other problems in your system, you know? So, so there's, a, there's a much greater cost to, uh, to the learning curve or to the time spent for your staff to try to find these things out without, a, you know, without automation or without a solid system. For sure, and and you know, size of company is also important, right? If you're in a small company out there, and and you have a small IT group, um, just getting up to that simple and and the next level of monitoring is going to be a big step. And there's a lot of things to learn from it. And so, you know, going in and getting that solidified, getting it straightened out, having confidence, uh, and showing being you know being able to show the value of your IT group and the work that you're doing to the larger company, that's that's huge. But then once that piece comes in, expanding that out um, as your company grows or as your infrastructure grows, you know that's that's a process that's going to take time. Uh, I think it's always important to to establish the basics first. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, that wraps up the Q and A for today, Larry. But I do have one final question for you. Um, but it's my question. So uh, if somebody wants to get started with Progress Software or to find out more about your company and, and what your solutions can do, what do you recommend for the next steps? Sure. Um, well, there's, there's, I have two recommendations for people here. Number one is there is a handout, if you can see it on the handout, um, the handout uh, uh, tab that's that's in your interface of choosing the right network observability platform I would recommend looking at that first I think that's a great paper um, when it comes to progress software we have a main progress software site and if you go to that site there's a whole section on our infrastructure um, uh, product portfolio uh, we also have whatsupgold.com and flowmon.com, which you can get to from that site, but you can also go to directly. Those are our two tools that I talked about. Uh, those are tools that, when combined into a platform, and they give you an extensive amount of observability into your IT infrastructure and uh, into your um, your network performance as well as your network security. So, um, so I would I would recommend uh, visiting, learning, uh, looking at the paper. And, uh, and reaching out to us. It's always very easy to, to have great conversations. We talk to a lot of people that are starting from scratch. We talk to a lot of people that are looking to expand or even people that are looking to move from, say, a lot of tools or a single tool that isn't suiting what they do to, uh, to more of a platform approach. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure your presentation today uh, also raised a lot of questions, a lot of new questions about the importance of observability that folks are going to want to follow up on. Um, well, thanks so much, Larry Goldman, for putting together uh, an informative presentation and for all of your insights in the Q&A. Uh, that's great stuff, and uh, we can't wait to, uh, to see more of what Progress Software is doing in the future. Thanks again for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. 
Okay. Um, so we are about out of time now, but we do have one more piece of business before we let you get back to your life. Uh, so that is the uh, Amazon gift card prize drawing. As I mentioned earlier, you do have to be present for the entire event to be eligible for the $250 gift card. And we do have a winner for today. Uh, and the winner of the card for uh, the Amazon giveaway is Samuel Penning from Illinois. Congratulations to Samuel. We'll be in touch very soon to get you your card. And with that, on behalf of the Actual Tech Media team, I want to thank Progress Software and Larry for making this event possible. It was a lot of fun for me, and I think, uh, well, I, I learned a lot, and I hoped all of you do too. And thank all of you for attending and for your great questions and your participation in this session. And that concludes today's event. Have a great rest of your day. And for those of you for whom uh, it's a long three-day weekend, enjoy your time off.